Hi guys, again welcome back. Now, uh, we've had so many questions being raised about fasting and the stages of fasting and the importance of fasting and we've discussed the importance of fasting in our previous video. Uh, so you can take a look at that video. Now today I'm taking it short and just trying to explain what happens every hour of fasting. Now fasting is basically uh, not eating. This is not starvation. You just it's willingly. You just uh, stop yourself from eating, no snacking. And uh, there are two forms. One is intermittent fasting, the one that you can eat for specific hours and then fast for uh, some prolonged uh, base, uh, time. So most people consider doing an OMAD, one meal a day. So that is basically uh, a 24-hour fast. Now others consider the 16-8. So you have uh, eight hours of uh, a gap of eight hours between your meals. Then you have 16 hours of no eating. So that is also basically another form of fasting. There's 12-12. You can do 12 hours of a gap of 12 hours between your meals, and then 12 hours uh, of fasting. So you're eating 12 hours, and then you you're fasting the next 12 hours. So you can do fasting according to how and where you are and uh, and you suit it uh, okay you edit it to, f to suit your your schedule okay but fasting is very important for several reasons one when you fast you start breaking down fat and you get ketone bodies ketone bodies are the best energy sources of uh, the body and the brain number two prolonged fasting can inhibit uh, formation of cancer cells and cancer uh, is inhibited by fasting because fasting brings you ketone bodies and cancer cells only survive on glucose but your body cells can survive on both glucose and ketone bodies so once you start fasting you move into uh, ketosis and therefore this suppresses cancer and tumor growth again fasting will reverse your insulin resistance and therefore your diabetes will disappear so basically you should start fasting and also combine it with healthy keto diets so that you don't uh, have these spikes of insulin all the time in your system so basically what happens during fasting now this one starts from eight hours to 15 hours why eight hours because zero to eight hours you're assuming you ate your last meal and digestion and absorption have taken four hours a maximum so you don't have anything in your stomach or uh, basically you're you're now relying on the energy that is stored in the liver which is glycogen now remember eight hours to 15 hours after you've eaten you've absorbed now your stomach starts to uh, to relax and there is this cleanup all contents of the GIT are cleaning up and uh, possibly uh, your small intestines have absorbed maximum uh, nutrients and most of them are now in the large intestines just waiting for uh, the final finalization of this product so that you can get your feces and some of uh, uh, the, the, the remnants being absorbed in the final stages of the large intestine. So basically you start the cleanup process. The stomach cleans it up. Just the same way you can uh, utilize a place or a room and then you clean it up when you leave. So basically your stomach starts to clean up. That's why it's advisable to at least have eight hours between two meals because that's the time when your GIT is now clear and then also your GIT needs to rest. We've put our GIT under so much pressure to always be working. There's no rest. Uh, and uh, remember the GIT has its own uh, brain its own nervous system which is called the enteric nervous system so it requires rest for you to digest absorb and also recover from uh, the toxins that may become through food so basically you're cleaning up your GIT and then sugar start to stabilize why because now uh, you know in the liver you have glycogen as a storage form of sugar so in your system the energy that was in the in the system now goes low because uh, you've already absorbed the food and it's stored in the liver and most of it that was in the system you already used it so your glucose starts to stabilize when you start fasting so that is from 8 to 15 hours your glucose starts to stabilize then you start now the liver starts to break down that glycogen to now supplement the low glucose in your system so that happens and then again remember we have so much glycogen in the liver that can last you for days so basically when people say uh, I have low blood sugars and I need to eat that doesn't make sense at all because uh, eating will not boost your blood sugar instantly because the liver has to do the breakdown. So if you don't eat, 
the liver will still give you glucose through breakdown of the stored glucose in form of glycogen. So it will break it down to give you sugar. And that's why I always say that most times um, hunger is not an emptiness of the stomach. Okay, so hunger is a mindset. If, if that hour that you eat, you go over that hour, then you don't feel hungry anymore because your liver is now giving you glucose by breaking down the stored glycogen. And then from 10 hours and above, your muscles start utilizing fat. So they're breaking down 50% of, they're utilizing 50% of the glucose and they're utilizing 50% of fat. So now there's a transition stage where now we want to move from glucose to fat and burning and getting ketones. So your muscles have already started adapting to breaking down the fat. So now you're using a certain amount, which is 50% of your glucose, and then you're breaking fat to get 50% of the energy, and that is the transition stage. So basically that is what happens between zero and 15 hours. And then from 15 to 24 hours, what happens? Here, ketosis starts. Ketosis is the breakdown of uh, uh, fat. So remember we said at 15 hours, the muscle is using 50% of fat now ketosis is that breakdown of fat to give you ketone bodies so at 15 hours to 24 hours this is where ketosis is active now you've started breaking down fat and then your cravings go down so people who fast uh who do these fastings and long 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 uh, periodic fasts they will tell you after the 24 hour mark or after the the, the 14 hour mark then cravings go low you don't feel hungry anymore and uh yeah so ketosis has started then your cravings go down and the appetite also is suppressed and again there is an increase in energy so this is where even the following day of fasting you are active you don't yawn in the morning so energy is high and uh, there is you start experiencing this mental clarity and then there is high mood so you feel uh, an elated mood you're jovial and you're doing a lot of work and then cognitive function improves so your memory becomes elevated so you have good memory you you have a good ability to solve problems and uh, to remember things then from 24 to 36 hours, that is where you go into full ketosis. Now this means you've burned all the glycogen in your liver and now the only source of energy that you have, since you're not supplementing it through diet, then it comes to fat. So now the body has, is breaking down fat to give you ketone bodies and that is what we call ketosis. And also the liver is breaking down the fat that is uh, present in the liver uh, to give you uh, ketone bodies. Now remember if you have a fatty liver, then this is where you become, uh, uh, it becomes helpful to you because now it starts breaking down the fat in the liver to give you energy. And that helps you recover from a fatty liver, which brings you a lot of problems. Again, from 24 to 36 hours, you have zero glycogen. So you've already burned all the glycogen in the liver and you're only now, you're now turning to, to the fat. Again, there is low appetite and there is low, basically all the, the things that you experience from eight hours, going up are the same same things that we'll experience in addition to this one to full ketosis to zero glycogen to a decrease in appetite and also cravings and remember cravings are, are come from carbohydrates okay so once you eat carbohydrates there is a steady increase in insulin in your blood to curb the glucose that is coming in and then that insulin takes you into a, uh, a slightly lower uh, blood glucose which is called hypoglycemia and that hypoglycemia calls for another uh, uh, dish of carbohydrates so that you can boost again your your blood glucose so that is where cravings come from again uh, so all this are happening to you but remember there's a hormone that is present in uh, people who are fat and people who eat a lot is called uh, ghrelin so ghrelin is an appetite hormone so now during this fasting 24 to 36 hours there is no appetite and this hormone ghrelin starts being suppressed and therefore you will not have, feel the hunger again here we have an increase in bdnf bdnf is the brain derived neurotropic factor this is a very important uh, 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 let me call it hormone in your brain why because it is the one that starts uh, stimulating the production of new brain cells so if sugar has killed your brain cells already you start generating new brain cells through, through bdnf and this happens only at 24 to 36 hours and that's why at this moment in time the mental clarity of these people is very high okay and the concentration the memory all this and the ability to remember things goes high and yet they are fasting so those people who tell us when you're fasting you start forgetting things that's a lie at 24 to 20 to 36 hours you have high mental clarity now at 36 to 48 hours this is like a, this is a prolonged fast so people who uh, practice a, a two-day fast or a three-day fast there are so many benefits that come with that from 36 hours to 48 hours remember at this hour you will feel a slight headache and uh, slight muscle cramps 
Now the solution to that is just to take saline water because you have depleted your sodium in the system and you, this is the, the reason why you're getting these muscle cramps and these light headaches. So this long uh, prolonged fasts, you are supposed to take saline water to replace your to replenish your sodium that you are losing so that you don't go into uh, uh, headaches and muscle cramps. So at 36 to 48 hours, this is where you start getting autophagy. Autophagy means, autophagy is a very important process in your life. This means that every time your cells are functioning, there are organelles uh, that are wasted, they die, they're killed, and some are, are destroyed. So they're still in the cell. So to clear these organelles, the cell has a problem in clearing these organelles. So autophagy comes in. When you first you get to autophagy, and autophagy is just utilizing this uh, dead debris in the cell, the organelles in the cell to make energy. So basically you're cleaning up the cell and destroying this, uh, converting these destroyed organelles into good energy. And that is very important for you because you'll clean up the cell from uh, toxins, you'll clear up the cell from uh, waste, and also you'll clear up the cell from radicals that might expose you to uh, cancer. So autophagy is very important. It starts at 36 to 48 hours. At this moment in time, remember BDNF is at its, BDNF is at its maximum and therefore memory is high. Also, there is repair and inflammation. So people who have autoimmune conditions, arthritis, uh, lupus, acne, all these autoimmune uh, conditions and even the gut, we start now healing the gut. So people who have peptic ulcer disease start healing that inflammation. So at this hour, there is repair and, 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 and inflammation healing. So you heal from inflammation, wounds, joint pains, back pains, you start healing them from 36 to 48 hours. Again, you are high on ketosis. That means your energy sources are only fat and therefore ketone bodies are produced. So therefore cancer cells will start dying. So people who have cancer, at 36 to 48 hours, you start feeling a relief in the pains that you, 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 you already have. Now again here, tumors are suppressed. And that's why I tell cancer patients, fasting will be very helpful for you. A 21-day fast is important for cancer patients. It is hard, yes. You will lose weight, yes. But you will recover from it and you will recover from cancer. And then after that, that is not the end goal. You start eating healthy so that you don't expose yourselves again to these uh, radicals. So cancer is already disappearing. And now, low oxidative stress. Now remember, inflammation is brought by low by high oxidative stress. So at 48 hours, there is low oxidative stress because the cell is cleaned up and therefore you start regenerating new mitochondria. So there's so much energy in your system and there's so much uh, 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 mental clarity and you, you feel good about it. Kindly practice it. Try it and you will tell me. Now, tumor suppression. So there's also tumor suppression. So if you have tumors and they don't have an explained uh, source, they will start to be suppressed and shrink. Again, you will boost your immunity at this level. Your immunity goes high, your red blood cells are rejuvenated and white blood cells are rejuvenated and even your stomach uh, acid goes into concentration and therefore high concentrated stomach acid will help you heal ulcers and also will help you in your immunity and boosting uh, your immune system. And then you reverse your insulin resistance and therefore diabetic patients from here, they will start feeling better, they will start feeling uh, uh, rejuvenated, energy is there, there's no more fainting, there's no more hunger and they adapt these systems. So 48 hour fasts are very important for people who are diabetic and I'm not telling you to fast every day. I'm telling you that this can be periodic. Possibly you can do it every after two weeks and then uh, 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 the rest you do intermittent fasting of 8 and 16. Now these are what we experience during fasting up to 48 hours. Now other people decide you can choose to go to up to 72 hours, okay? Now what happens between 48 to 60 hours? Again, there is an increase in insulin sensitivity. That means your insulin start working, your cells are becoming sensitive to insulin, so they are burning fat and therefore you lose weight. Number two, there is an, a, a decrease in inflammation again and autoimmune conditions. So people with arthritis will recover, people with gout will start recovering, your kidneys will be uh, rejuvenated, your liver will be uh, free from fat, so you'll recover from a fatty liver, and therefore all these conditions will disappear. And then again, more autophagy, so more cell cleaning, more mitochondria for you, and that is the best uh, result that you want to achieve. Then again, above all, tumors and cancers will be suppressed. That is from 48 to 60 hours. Then from 60 hours to 72 hours, the last stage, you have a double uh, 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 sensitization and immune rejuvenation.
you can imagine that so you have a, a, this fresh immune system a rejuvenated one ready to fight infections for you and you have high content of white blood cells and again there is an increase in stem cells stem cells are like the bigger cells that are broken down to give you smaller cells and differentiated cells okay so that's a layman understanding so you have an increase in stem cells you have an increase in brain cells that basically means that all your cells will be rejuvenated so kindly start practicing fasting you can start by uh, intermittent fasting then grow up to a 24 hour uh, fasting which is an omad then go to 36 hours as you as you increase then you go to periodic uh, long fasts so basically this is what happens uh, during fasting and i hope you appreciate this information and again start fasting